Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations Part 33. In the previous video, we began the trial as Miley Boy, his first trial as a defense attorney. We are listening to the very initial testimony from Bikini, the head nun. That night I was helping an alkali with a training in the inner temple, but well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte and return to the Hazakura Temple. There's no bath at the Inner Temple, you see, and I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I just finished that I was heading back, and that's when I saw it. Saw it? Hmm. Hi, so it's a simple coincidence the effect is of returning to Hazakura Temple. Uh, yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. Yeah, likely story. Sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Hi, Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. Okay, how do you know it was night outside? Oh, you're gonna tell me you believe in the sun, do you, idiot? What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we do to train people, right? Hi, we'll be the ones asking questions here, madam. In order to do that, a place strong and spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes who spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? Um, I mostly just sleep. It's all quite exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple where the murder took place? Violently? That's right, it's no laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and a fork during the cold months. Uh, just being alive is like strict training. Wah ha 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 On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right, raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, I was going to finally finish me off. You left Iris to help. With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10 p.m., so we're starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Hey, what not your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolyte so they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night. You met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? So that is... That doesn't job with what Iris has told us, right? She said she never left her room? So that would mean she was at the Inner Temple with them the whole time? If she's telling the truth. Yes, yes, she's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. Now, I believe she's just lying about Iris already be being there? I don't know. So we don't have any proof that Iris was, uh... Because I, I do need to refresh my memory on all the evidence, because it's been a day. Because, like, so basically, Bikini's story, then, is that Iris was at the Inner Temple with her. She left to go back to Hazakura, leaving Iris there with Maya. But then also found Iris at the temple after her bath? So I guess, theoretically, there would have been enough time for her to come back from the Inner Temple if she had been left there. She returned to Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath, because she did say that she actually took the bath, right? It wasn't that she came back to Hazakura Temple and instantly saw the murder. My pack is to blame for everything. It's a do-or-be-done-in kind of world, after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know it's on your mind. 
I bet your next question is gonna be, where exactly did you wash? Uh, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? I was just- ah! Pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. Ah, the loss of the loss. There's some sort of kick Nissan stuck to the defense's bench. Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so... The time took place in- the crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right, in other words, it was a pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Huh, ah, ah, that certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify. Just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Okay. But she didn't actually give any times for us. Left Iris. Now, I don't really know if is Iris's testimony, would that be an actual contradiction? Because Iris's testimony is not backed, right? But it does... Because, I mean, it would be easy to dismiss Iris' testimony as, like, well, she's lying. That, like, it, it basically becomes a he said, she said situation. So I don't know if this is an actual contradiction, even though this evidence does contradict what she said. I think I'm going to try it, because we do kind of have to, like, ass like, like, within reason, I guess you can kind of assume that your uh, evidence is correct. If not, like, uh, ultimately story-wise, in the terms of, like, gameplay. Okay, so that is what they wanted. And, I mean, I think that that makes sense, but there was a little bit of, like, doubt there. And, like, technically, it's not, you know... Like, it, it is a contradiction to our evidence, but Iris' testimony is not necessarily, like, fact in the same way that, like, oh, this has blood on it and fingerprints. Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on the powers of observation and memory, after all. Because like, we don't have any actual proof, I don't think, that Iris was in the temple the entire time, aside from her testimony. Um, now, you could say that this, you know, would give us a chance to segue into proving that, but we don't have a way to prove that. Well, 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 don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of the Hazegard Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. And this is when you say, but she's lying, and then you're like, oh, uh, 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 uh you blew up my spot. Objection. A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? Yeah, I mean, she's definitely got a point. The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. <laughs> but that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. That's also valid. And that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm, she does indeed seem to have honest eyes. Hey! All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendants have any reason to lie. Which means, we must call your memory into question. Dear, 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 you're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Hey, well, uh, that isn't exactly what I... My memory is perfect, crystal clear, especially in the winter. Hey, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination. Eh. Mr. Edgeworth, if you're going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show a more decisive piece of evidence. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna pull up some cards with shapes on them, and you gotta memorize the order that I put them up in, okay? Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. 
Hi, can you please add your comments about Iris to the testimony? Or boot Iris? Didn't let us uh, return to the cross examination? She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. And okay, we'll press this again. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. <laughs> Iris always wears the same clothes. <laughs> the smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake. Thinking I made a mistake. Hi, hey, an excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant who you claim to have met, he was wearing this demon warning hood, correct? Ah, of course. That's a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. Wah, ha, 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 ha. Wait a minute. Objection! Uh, hold it right there. Why do you have that? <laughs> That's the question of the day now, isn't it? Miss Von Karma. I have you know, this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw would have should have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. Not a bad feeling at all exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. Or order in the court! Hi, witness here! Ah, oh, what the hell, man? Sister, this hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. Hi, I see! A stockpile! A surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood. This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Huh, this is quite strange. Ah! If there's a surplus of hoods and you could have worn one of those, there's no contradiction here. Hmm. Sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancy such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. Seeds of doubt. Witness! I, well, I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt because, you know, the whip. You must give every detail with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. This seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. I just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. What? Jokes on you, I'm into that shit? I finished my bath around 11 and thought I should return to the inner temple. So what's the autopsy again? Between 10 and 11? Now we don't know if that's like 11, you know, cutoff or, you know, that means it's like midnight. And I was walking back. I heard a noise in the courtyard. I took a look and Iris was, oh, Mystic Elise. And with that sword of all things. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out to the courtyard. Corner room faces to the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. Now, should she know that she was, like, her, she had those bruises and everything? It's possible. I don't think that's necessarily a contradiction in and of itself, but it's something to think about. Because, I mean, it's entirely possible that she would have been, you know, like... Because, I mean, they do imply that the witnesses, of course, go over their testimony first with the prosecution. So it seems like she would probably know that information about the bruising. And she's just assuming that it was the window. Or she saw him fall out the window and isn't telling us. Hey, you truly saw a terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like von, Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me seeing it off in this very chair. Uh, well, uh, something like that. This judge, his imagination is about as vivid and creative as Death of Cumshoes. Did I say Cumshoes? I'm sorry, Mr. Gumshoe. I didn't really mean to say that. It's just kind of like the G turned into a to a K. 
I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. <laughs> anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. I don't everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps, Amon? That checks out with what we heard earlier. It's about 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge. From well, actually, they said it was a 20 minutes to Dusky Bridge, so she'd be moving. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? Th that's right. I was heading along the walkway towards the main hall. You say you heard a noise? Thump! Just like that! It can only be the sound of the victim falling. It's very quiet in the temple, you know. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. I doubt that. Thump! Just like that! Unless you're like talking about like a big snow pile falling off a tree, then yeah, I could buy that. But if you're talking about individual like snow... But then couldn't this noise you heard have been the snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. Wah ha 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 Next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound, I looked over the courtyard and... Iris was... Oh, Mr. Galicia, that's sort of all things. This is the second time the witness has testified to seeing the defendant. But some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini, try and recall exactly who it was, as clear as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something that has been bugging me this whole time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Her hood! Her hood? That's right, it's coming back to me! Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood! I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she'd given that hood away to someone, right? Okay, I mean, like, shut up. <laughs> You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, what do you say, Miles Edgeworth? This isn't personally important. I, it's not important. I mean, it's, it's kind of important. This may, initial, this may initially appear to be putting me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements added to the testimony. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, you need to only ask. I'll gladly win you my whip. I don't think the whip is good enough. Witness, add the statement to your testimony. Iris didn't have her hood on. Are you sure about that? Uh, yes, after all, we always wear the same clothes. I don't mean because we're poor, you understand? It's our style. Yeah, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from normal, so that really stuck out. Like me holding a whippet puppy instead of my whip. And at least then I might bite you and not someone else. I heard this didn't have her hood on. I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, at least that was a boot the victim, eh? The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room was on the second floor? No, no, no. Hasegaro Temple is a single-story building. But the mountain itself slopes downward. Which elevates the main gate side of the temple and the guest rooms in the back. So about the height of a two-story building. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes, I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room, after all. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise in the courtyard, okay? Thump! Just like that! You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. It 
it appears the witness is not mistaken, then... Yup, yup, I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all. A head honcho of Hazakura Temple. Only two of them work in there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback remark? Only two of them working there. I don't feel like she's lying. This is a very powerful testimony, too. He claims to have seen the incident in which the defendant would stab the victim. There are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Snow from 10 to 10.50. Okay. Now that... Could be something. Well, no, because, I mean, she's not claiming it's the snow. It's very quiet and simple. You can hear the snow falling from the branches. Bump. Just like that. Couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? Because we, we wouldn't... Because I feel like that doesn't actually help us, right? Because that would just prove that it wasn't snow and, you know... That doesn't really seem to pertain. in the courtyard. Thump. Just like that. There's definitely something on this last statement. Let's do it one more time. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard, okay? Bump. So basically, I mean, like, I feel like there's something to do with the, the idea that, like, there's no reason for her to assume it would have been a body fall, and she should have naturally just assumed it was the snow. But granted, the snow had stopped by this point. But granted, you know, snow can still fall from trees and stuff even after it stops snowing. I don't, I don't know. Oh, wait. Didn't you say something about she always wears a hood? She looks different from normal. I think there's something here because she's not wearing her hood in this picture. So saying that she's always wearing her hood, that's why it would have stuck out in your mind seems kind of uh, like a contradiction. Come on, that, that felt, that was so good. 
He's done with such gusto. I suppose I must agree that that is all there is to it. Don't get smart with me. Get smart with this penalty. I fear that even I can make mistakes. I, I really thought that was it. Wait, 10 feet after death? I didn't even pay attention to that. I'm surprised that hadn't been like more. Yeah, no, I had not even noticed that it says after death. I mean, they never really brought attention to that. That's like so important. <laughs> Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you were overlooking one thing. This Von Karma. Would you be so kind as to take another look at this autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Hi, that's right. It says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. The defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard. And how did the victim go on to take a 10 foot fall? Maybe she used her uh, telepathic spirit powers to raise her up and smash her down. Order! Order! Hi, the victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in a room. Don't you agree? That, that is the logical conclusion. Yes, yeah, that's why the victim must have been stabbed with the defendant in her own room. She was then thrown out of her window down in the courtyard below. Oh, so could it have been that, like, in that picture they show, that's her actually trying to remove the sword from her? Like, because it does look like she's, like, struggling really hard. Um, so it could be that she's trying to take the sword out of Elise. But, uh, it just kind of makes it look like she's stabbing her, I guess. Do you think she would just, like... Well, I, what am I saying? I was like, why would the defendant ever tell you any information that would prove their innocence? Instead, they could just not tell you anything and make themselves look guilty as hell until the exact moment. Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss uh, Elisa's room? He would have stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Hi, well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. No weapons just caused traces of blood to be found in my glorious payoff beard. However, there was no blood in the room. Then you claim that... Ah! I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. But I'm sure your honor is well aware. But when a stab wound produces the most blood... Hi, when it produces the most blood... Very little blood is actually lost in the moment of a blade's insertion. You want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body? That would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, with the weapon still in place, and I stuck a lid on the wound. I mean, there, there, there's still some blood, but um, I'll, I'll bother logic here. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. I mean, it's it's not, but we'll roll with it. The game has addressed that idea enough for me to just ignore it. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Well, no. It, like, it doesn't even in the slightest remove the contradictions. Order, order, order! I must admit that it's a pro uh, probable version of events. I expect no less from Francesca von Karma. He locates and takes control of every vital point. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness! Please, remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of the winter snow has bent me out of shape, especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I'll give you a vigorous massage once you're finished here. With the whip? 
Oh boy. All right, all right. Well, I like Charles to see the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I did actually see her stab, Mystic Elise. Yes, I lied earlier. Shut up. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? When I woke, Mr. Ami was there. Stabbing Mr. Galise to the back. Mmm. This all confirms Mr. Von Car Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Francesca Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. Yeah, that's why we got the question wrong earlier, was to prove that you can't get perfection. Not because I messed up. Shut up. At that time, was the victim bleeding? Uh, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. So I'm not entirely sure. I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. You literally just said you never seen so much blood. I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the incident when the victim was stabbed? Think carefully, this is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No, when I looked over, the sword was already in Mystic Elise's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but this testimony supports our theory. The victim was stabbed in her room and then dropped under the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. No, it does not, in the slightest. So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? Th th that's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room, and her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well. Hmm, that seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press this point further? Uh, yeah, press further. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well, I say what I saw is what I saw. Hey, what'd you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out from her, out of her. Plain as day. Pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you will add the statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. Smoothly, you say? You're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out? Uh, that's right. The whole thing happened right next to the gold statue of Mr. Gami. She doesn't, doesn't look very smooth. Mr. Galice was on the ground and Iris was stooped over. The sword was buried up to the hilt. When Iris stood up, the sword in her hand just slid out of Mystic Elise's body. It slid out from that gaping wound. I mean, it doesn't really like it would smoothly slide out of fucking anything. Hi, hey, goes without saying that the sword is removed or bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Is that really the case? I can't help but feel that something about the testimony is very out of place. That something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. Was the bleeding caused by the killer moving the sword? No mistake, and I remember it all clear as day. Don't you think that's a bit odd? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? Why would the killer pull out the sword? What? All she wanted to do was place the weapon in the hand of the gold statue, and there was no reason to remove it from the body. All it would have accomplished is causing the victim to bleed unnecessarily. Your thoughts, Miss Von Karma? Th th that's... 
Indeed. It is strange now that you mention it. I'm going to need to find an answer to this mystery, too. I mean, it could have been that uh, Iris didn't kill her and was just like, yo, this lady's got a fucking sword in her. And was like, let's get the sword out, not thinking. I could see that. Or that's like really what we should be kind of arguing, that the only reason their fingerprints are on there is because she was trying to help. I anyway, the witness saw something terrible. So what did you do after that witness? Now, what the killer did next? You saw none of it, correct? Well, I was unconscious. How long were you out for? I don't know, 10, maybe 20 minutes? A young man with a very prickly-looking head woke me up. By stepping on me, actually. Hmm. I'm not sure I like that method of recitation. Resuscitation? Well, I didn't ask for math to mouth or anything of the sort, but I would have welcomed a more gentle awakening right about then, let me tell you that. I shall have words with the offender personally. What did you see upon awakening? I'm Mr. Gami, you're referring to the golden statue, correct? Just stabbing someone with a shishichicho, a sacred treasure, is terrible enough. But then to make Mystic Ami hold the blade! Truly a heinous, despicable crime. It's easy to despise something, he knew we can do it. However, there is something that cannot be done so easily. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's doubly hard for you. Anyway, damn, fucking got him. Anyway, what is the problem? Exactly why would the killer set up this gruesome scene? Can any ex anyone explain the reasoning behind that? Hmm. No, I don't think I can. There isn't always a logical reason behind why someone acts. Hmm, that's true. So true. In early spring, for example, I often find myself... There isn't always. That phrase might come in handy someday. There are too many unnatural elements in this case. Why was it necessary to use the Shi Chichito from the Ami statue as a weapon? Why was the weapon ultimately placed back in the hands of the statue? If I can expose the flaws in this testimony, perhaps then I can begin to find the truth. I mean, yes, it does look like the, um, like the sword doesn't look like it would smoothly draw out, right? Look how the points would kind of serve as, um, like catches on the way back, but it doesn't say anything about that in the evidence thing, so I don't know if that's just me, like, assuming something. We'll probably we'll, we'll press this again and then we'll try presenting the sword. It seemed like a bit simple, so I wasn't entirely sure. Mr. Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least I like to think so. There are too many contradictions here. What do you mean? You make a sense oh, I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Uh, hey, Mr. Edgeworth, you know how they call people who lie liars? What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt in the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain you. Ah! Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? I mean, 
Oh, yeah, because obviously there's not enough blood on it. I didn't even pay attention to the hilt part. Or, like, I didn't really think about the blood picture. No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble. I, too, may appear to be weak and frail. Then I can crush men under my heel and make them weep should I choose to. Oh, the objection stands. I looked a little back there, I must admit. I object to your objection. That isn't the only issue here. If the sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt, why well, just look at all the branches on it? It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. Also, the blood? That's... We also have a problem with the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. One would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. And that's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim is stabbed with a shishishito. Even a weapon of this nature it may still sometimes slide out smoothly, and it may still sometimes stop the blood loss. No, it wouldn't. And no, it wouldn't. And also, the blood, dude. If it was to the hilt, there'd be more blood on it. I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got more. This one is simple. The sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt. Why is there only blood on the tip of it? If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. Ah, uh, good of Phoenix to lend me his trusty boombox. Actually, did we establish in uh, the previous game that Miles got his own boombox? I think we did. I think it's the lore. But he still probably got lent Phoenixes with the with the right tracks set up on it, and with specific instructions on when to uh, press them. Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. Okay, you know what? Shut up. What does this mean? No perfect contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is the weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shishichito. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool! Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? Well... It's because the Mystic Army was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe the Shishishito was the real murder weapon. Order, order, order! So maybe the Shishishito was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw that offended stabbed the victim with a sword like object. No, she didn't. That's true! The response, Mr. Edgeworth, uh, that she literally said she didn't see her stab her? That is so. I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes. Namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? We will learn that uh, next time. I'm Extra Cheesy 87 Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.